Hello friends, my name is Volantis, and today I actually spent my own real life money to do a challenge run. Why, you ask? To that I say, shut your mouth. When I did my reddit poll to find out the worst gun for attempting Dead Space 2, a few people suggested I should have included the rivet gun. Apparently the rivet gun is pure ass butter, but I didn't include it as the only way to get it now is by purchasing the Supernova Pack DLC. So at the time, I disregarded it, but I want to try it now. So I plopped down a life ruining $5 and scored the worst deal of the century. Can I beat Dead Space 2 on survivalist difficulty with only the rivet gun? Before we actually begin, let's set some ground rules. First, no scam. That means stasis, kinesis, and melee. The rivet gun is to be my only tool in this run. Any use of scam for progression will result in a failure, except for any instances where they are forced upon me. Things such as batteries, panels, insta-kill environments, puzzles, etc but I will allow use of stasis canisters I find along my journey, just no using the stasis module. I am also deciding now that I can't even use melee on item boxes, on corpses for extra resources, or even fuse boxes. From what I can tell, the rivet gun uses a lot of ammo, so using some for those purposes probably won't hurt my run too bad. Next, I want to treat this as close to a new game as I can. Lucky for me, buying the rivet gun means it's in the store as soon as I reach it the first time, so I don't have to play through the game once prior to actually starting the challenge like I had to do with the detonator and the flamethrower. That being said, the only gun available before the first store is the plasma cutter, so I'm forced to use it for the bulk of the first chapter. But to make you feel better, I'll dodge any enemies I don't have to kill until I reach the store. I also will not allow myself to use the cutter to double tap corpses for resources or to use item boxes, since neither is necessary for progression. Lastly, DLC. As I mentioned, I had to buy the Supernova pack to get the rivet gun. That pack also comes with a few suits and some free weapons. Obviously I won't be using the other guns, but I'm restricted from using the suits as well. Only the ones offered in the base game through the schematics I pick up are allowed. I also have Dead Space Ignition save data. This gives me access to a few conduit rooms scattered throughout the game, which have extra resources, but I'm not allowed to use those either. Alright, any last questions before we begin? No? Wonderful! Upon waking up from a tedious three-year coma, I'm forced to put my legs to work as all hell breaks loose in this hospital. I get shanked pretty good, but with the power of my massive tree trunk thighs, I'm able to fend off the attacking zombie. The necrogods have taken notice of me knocking on death's door and cleared the path for me, and even offered a slab of meat in these trying times. A very friendly gentleman gifts me a flashlight and some life goo, I belly flop through an air vent, run away from some deadheads, and I acquire the forbidden tool, the plasma cutter. The slasher strapped to the gurney is not so kind. He'll keep flailing his arm swords to block your path. So this is the first necro we have to kill with the cutter. The three slashers in the waiting room and the five by the admin desk are also required to kill to progress. Once you reach triage, the game insists it teaches you how to use stasis. We have to freeze and kill the slasher here. It will quite literally insta-kill you on any difficulty if you don't stasis it, and there's no way to dodge its attack. Then you have to stasis the doorway open to leave the room. So that's a triple fail if you want to be a dick about it. But like I said, I can't get the rivet gun yet, and this room is required to teach you how to use stasis. So by the laws of logic and not being a douchebag, I'm not counting them as failures. It would be pointless to make this entire video if you accepted any of the first 75% of chapter 1 as a failure. But I digress. The two pukers you encounter don't need to be killed, but I found I needed to at least go mafia boss and break their fucking legs to avoid dying because the elevator takes a goddamn eternity to open. Even if I trail the pukers far away, they still catch back up when I'm waiting for the elevator. The decompression window requires you to shoot the panel with the plasma cutter, and there's a slasher playing possum in the room with the store that you have to kill. So altogether we have 10 enemies we have to kill, 2 I personally had to damage, and 2 environmental obstacles. Not bad, but not great either. Anywho, I reach the store and I can officially begin the challenge. I grab my free rivet gun and... Um... Are you seeing the same issue I'm seeing? I'll give you a second. There's no ammo. Ass! The rivet gun comes with a whopping 16 rounds. I backtracked a bit to try and collect more ammo, and between shooting open item boxes and avoiding enemies, ended up with an extra 21 bolts. I'm rich! The tripod in the next area is normally child's play, but attempting to slay it with 37 rounds of pure ass cheese is bad enough to give me flashbacks of the Tormentor from my detonator only run. <sighs> 
I tried for quite a while to beat this thing. I spent enough time in this room to learn the tripod's attack patterns and avoid nearly every attack. I played around with the alt fire to find the best method of attack, and my conclusion is, I don't really understand how it works. I was very close to giving up in the early attempts. I felt that there was no way that 37 rounds would be enough. I even looked up a couple of other people's runs, and they either used stasis or switched to the plasma cutter, but I was determined to do neither unless I felt it was absolutely necessary. After each attempt, I got more confident in my ability to dodge an attack and shoot its weak spot. I would only use the alt fire once I fired about 5 shots so as to not waste them, but on several occasions I would blow up one of the tripod's arms with plenty of ammo left, but failed to blow up the second arm before running out, but as time went on I felt more confident that this fight was possible. Then. It happened. After 38 failed attempts, with one shot left, I sent that tripod back to hell. <sighs> I'm going to upload the entire successful fight to my second channel, Volantis Moon 2, for anyone that doubts whether I did this fight legit or not. So head over there if you want to see it. Any other proof videos I decide to make always get uploaded there. I spent about an hour and a half in this chapter, so let's move on, please. Luckily my worst fear didn't come true, as once I reached the next store I was able to buy ammo. Rivet bolts are surprisingly cheap, the cheapest in the game, second only to the pulse rifle. Maybe that's a bad sign. As I would come to find out, that was a bad sign. The rivet gun completely gobbles up ammo. It seems to do less damage than the pulse rifle while being only marginally faster at shooting than the plasma cutter. This was essentially my practice chapter, I didn't have the money or resources to mess around. This early on, the rivet gun has no upgrades which makes it weak as hell. Another downside is running low on ammo. Having to backtrack to the store a couple times meant running into necros respawning in rooms that I've already cleared out. Honestly, I've never had to backtrack through this chapter before, so I didn't know this was a thing here. The laundry room ambush was stress inducing, mostly because I couldn't see dick, but with some use of the alt fire I made it through in a single try. I survived the train ride and the chapter ends with an awkward defenseless spaghetti noodle shooting spree. Unfortunately, I died very quickly. I ran out of ammo before even killing five necros, so yeah, no way I'm gonna last like that. I opted to reload a save, stocked up on as much ammo as I could, and descended back into hell. Because I'm basically a one-man militia now, I blasted through this fight in only three tries. Oh my god, you know what? This is really scary! Oogly moogly, bitch! Ah! Soon after, I'm introduced to the shitlings known as The Pack. I feel like I'm in some horrific nightmare version of Fortnite. You got games on your phone? <laughs> I figured this batch of crotch fruit would offer me a smorgasbord of items, but like the little crumb bandits they are, they often would despawn after dying and keep all the loot for themselves. While making my way through this chapter, I came across swarmers for the first time. They're far less of a threat than in the first game, so I figured I'd forego wasting ammo and just hardcore dance them to death. The last obstacle of the chapter is the fight in the Marker Plaza. Infectors are the biggest problem here. They'll create a lot of extra enemies, which is no bueno when your gun only fires little pellets of doo-doo butter. Once I managed to take the infectors out early, the rest became really easy. I could also use the exploders as proximity mines and take out an extra necromorph or two. I'm gonna be real with you, my dudes. At this point in the game, the hardest parts are mostly over. I was collecting enough resources to buy enough ammo to handle pretty much every fight. The only hard part was actually doing the fights and not screwing them up. I don't want to bore you with detailing every time I made an upgrade, so just know that I primarily went for damage any time I could. Being able to use fewer shots was most important to me. I would try and upgrade capacity if I had the opportunity any time I had a low ammo clip. Everything else just got upgraded if they were in the way of damage or capacity, or once they were the only things left. Also worth noting real quick is that I upgraded to the security suit. Chapter 4 is short, so let's skip to the end. There's a stalker ambush inside the church. Now, stalkers were the easiest enemies to kill with the detonator. They would literally run into the mines and unalive themselves. But the rivet gun is equivalent to poking things with a stick, so the stalkers take a lot of abuse this time around. It also doesn't help that they have armor on their heads, so it's best to go for the legs first to really slow them down and then blow off an arm or two. I strap on my adidas and sprint through the cryogenics room, only needing to kill one necro before safely making it to the other side. After the coffin puzzle, I stop to upgrade my gun where I maxed out the damage. As I've mentioned a couple times already, I did a detonator only run of this game. If you haven't seen that, respectfully, what the hell are you doing? Secondly, there's a link to it in the description below, so go watch it. But why is that relevant? 
because Chapter 5 was the single biggest obstacle of the whole run, made possible almost entirely by the tripod and the tormentor. It scarred me to the point where I'm now nervous to attempt it on any other solo gun run, but I was cautiously optimistic since the rivet gun doesn't hurt you when fired in close proximity like the detonator does. Anyway, the detonator was absolute ass for this chapter. The tripod and the cathedral did not like to take damage from it, and the tormentor would not die before Isaac does. I spent over 100 attempts trying to kill it. But stunningly, this run was infinitely easier. I admittedly almost died to the tripod, but it took only one try to get past it, the shrieking crib lizards, and the handful of lifeless heathens. Dana has left the chat, and I'm preparing to spend several hours in this unending loop of pure hell. Okay, deep breaths. Okay, let's go. By this point in the run, large fights are getting easier. My rivet gun's damage is maxed out, and I have enough money to not have to be an expert marksman against hordes of necromorphs. But the game is about to start sending enhanced versions of necromorphs at me, so I still need to be on my toes. We have another marker plaza fight, this time with pregnants and leapers. But it was easier than the first one since I didn't have to deal with those douchebag infectors. Leapers ain't shit without their arms, and skewering an enemy a few times before hitting the alt fire usually obliterates whatever I'm fighting. Before reaching the school, we've got to navigate a cargo room full of stalkers. Again, these things are bitches. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Simply standing in the corner and trying to shoot them enough times to kill them before they could charge me wasn't really working. I mean, I could have done it with enough tries, but I felt like I was just wasting a lot of ammo. So what I tried instead was to make a sort of makeshift frag grenade by shooting bolts into the ground and then setting them off with the alt fire when a stalker ran over them. It worked well a couple of times, but wasn't that reliable. But while I was doing that, I noticed something. If I step backward through the gateway, the stalkers would back off. There's some sort of boundary there that makes them not aggressive. Like a safe zone, basically. So I'd try to blow them up first and put a few extra shots into them if that didn't work. If they got too close, I'd back up into the safe zone to keep them from ramming my guts out my ass. This worked pretty well, and soon I was on my way. I meet some badass, definitely not a love interest named Ellie, and shortly after I arrive at the school. This is where we first meet Crawlers, the pre-evolution, so to speak, of the pack. They're hella easy to bait though. Just like Sis, all you gotta do is get real close, and then they'll involuntarily explode, spewing a fountain of venom and disease your way. No ammo wasted. The only part worth noting in the school is the ambush in the gym. The most annoying part is the infectors, which at this point will create enhanced slashers for you. The first attempt at the fight was going fine, until one of said enhanced slashers killed me from half health. Super. I did my best to dismember or otherwise make inaccessible the corpses in this room for the second try, so the infectors would have nothing to munch on. A large herd of Cheeto stained shit factories began assaulting me, but a few dozen rivet bolts ensure that my phone and all of its games stay safe and sound. The first brute of the game attacks, but it's quite easy to dispose of with some quick feet and a healthy dose of alt fire. Explain to me why we need to use rigs to communicate when we're literally 10 feet apart? Kids these days, always staring at their damn screens. The end of the chapter is guarded by, well, a guardian. These are much easier than you'd expect. Just line up your shots carefully and the tentacles get severed pretty quick. The tripod elevator, one of my least favorite parts of the game, is next. It was actually pretty easy. That seems to be a recurring theme in my challenge runs. Those big three-armed bastards won't do much harm as long as you just keep shooting the weak spots. Welcome to Thunderdome, bitch. Now I get to pal around with my bestest friend in the whole galaxy, Auntie. She's just so helpful, you know? She hangs up some dope LED lights that kill my enemies, adopted a couple puppies for me to play with, gave me a bench to upgrade my gun, and helps me power down a giant supercomputer so that I can continue my mission. After Auntie and I go our separate ways, I encounter my least favorite enemy in the entire run, the Divider. Or more specifically, the Divider Spawn. Also called the Components by the Dead Space Wiki, apparently. Anyway, these components are a huge pain in the ass. Sure, they only take a couple shots to kill, but good luck actually shooting the little shits! The big wiggly outside is pretty easy to deal with, so I take care of it and loot the large area around the solar array. I realign said solar array, which causes a massive fucking laser beam to absolutely fuck everything below into last century. 
After shattering my spine into a billion pieces, I spend the next 90 seconds outrunning more snot gobblers. Why the fuck do they want my phone so bad? Oh. By now I'm basically rolling in cash. I sell every stasis pack and every little bit of ammo I find for other guns, so I'm already in the six figures. I'm so unconcerned at this point that I pretty much rambo through most fights and sometimes don't get hit at all. I impress even myself. I upgrade to the vintage suit to get that sweet, sweet discount. Inflation has hit everyone hard, man. I need to save every dollar I can. I also finish upgrading the rivet gun, and now I've got to navigate some dark, ominous series of venting systems. That's game developer speak for death traps. I haven't really talked about using stasis much, but this is an area that requires it. The obstacles here are spinny, shreddy, burny objects of instant death. I tried to get past one of them without stasis, and immediately regretted it. So yeah, I need to use it to not get my meat tenderized. Another wiggly boy waits at the far end, so I put a few rounds in its big glowing sacks and continue on my way. My newest directive is to get the tram up and running, but a group of leapers desperately want to see me dead. But they are no match for my deadly Rudy Tooty point and shooty. Hello? Yes? I come face to face with a divider, and despite its music cue filling me with anxiety, I blew it into a handful of bloody spaghetti noodles. But just when I thought I was in the clear, the spaghetti attacked! Oof! I blew it up again, but opted to just run past the divider pieces. It's not like you get rewarded for killing them anyway. I made it through the decompression room after accidentally killing myself in it, took out another guardian, then got the tram called up whilst getting the goddamn piss scared out of me. Surprise, motherfucker! Mom angrily cuts our road trip short when I tell her I forgot my Game Boy at home, and as punishment, she sends me out alone to either get blown up or completely sheared in half by some space zombies. I carefully and slowly made my way through the stalker room, baiting the cysts to blow themselves up and cautiously disposing of each stalker that attacked. Then I get to the Guardian, which cheaply killed me by firing a pod right at my feet that instantly blew up. And of course, rather than respawning me right before the Guardian, it puts me back before the entire room I just cleared out. Fuck this game. Round 2. Bait the pimple boys and dismember those bird brain bastards. Alright, where's that exploder? I hear him. Aha! Die! 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 What? How the fuck? Round 3. Bait cyst. Kill stalkers. Blow up exploder. Fuck up the guardian. There. Okie dokie, I gotta blow up some enormous tentacles with some equally enormous explosive tanks, but not before being attacked by another gangly three-legged freak. My years of tripod dodging has prepared me for this very moment. It literally only took 53 seconds. I'm a sucker for nostalgia, so I convinced mom to make a stop at my old stomping grounds. Literally. The Ishimura. I hate passing up power nodes, so I spent four whole minutes fighting with this OSHA-violating pile of junk in front of the door to the restroom so I could grab one. I took a fair bit of abuse in the long brute corridor and probably would have kicked the bucket if not for my god-tier ability of obliterating zombies with a BB gun. But as with just about every fight by this point in the game, I got through it without dying. And then I somehow failed the hacking puzzle despite getting the blue indicator. Alrighty then. I make a quick pit stop to sell off some more useless crap, and holy hell! Look at all that cash, baby. By now, it has gotten significantly easier to stockpile resources. Despite playing on hard mode, the game is basically throwing ammo at me. I don't know if I'm just that good with this gun, or if it's way easier to use than people made it seem. But by this point in the run, I barely have to strategize. The majority of enemies go down in less than 10 shots, and I often get more ammo as a reward. I have more than enough money to be somewhat careless and just rambo through a lot of encounters. Well, even though the run is getting much easier, the hallway before the centrifuge is still as annoying as that itch you get on the bottom of your balls that you can't scratch because you're wearing jeans that are just a smidge too tight. I feel like the developers were just laughing their asses off when they decided how many enemies to put in this godforsaken hallway. I was doing okay until I got my ass ate by a slasher. I took the opportunity to get a full heal with a health upgrade before continuing on to repair the centrifuge. The decontamination room was fairly easy as well. One bolt for each carpet goblin and some alt fire for the moldy meat bags. The diagnostics room gave me a lot of grief in my detonator run. It was enough to bring my piss to a boil. But on this run, it's barely even worth mentioning. I barely broke a sweat, and one leaper even graciously unalived itself to make my journey all the more enjoyable. All that remains is the atrium, which was surprisingly challenging at first. 
The second try left me with a pixel of health left, which I remedied with a quick health upgrade. Like I said earlier, I wasn't hardly strategizing fights at this point. I'd go into it just aggressively stapling bitches to the floor. I'm rich, ain't nobody got time for that. For some reason, there weren't any necromorphs waiting for me at the end of the atrium, so I went about my business as usual. I activate the gravity tethers, yell at a ghost like a freaking weirdo, then launch myself into another building. I really seem to enjoy doing that. So this little video transmission comes in where Strauss is trying to stab Ellie's eye out with his screwdriver, but I noticed something on this playthrough that bothered me. Strauss stabs Ellie's left eye here, but when we meet up with her later in the chapter, her right eye is missing. I thought for sure it was a continuity error, but maybe not. See, Ellie's transmission is coming from her right arm, whereas earlier in the game it came from her left. So either the developers messed up twice, or this video is mirrored for some strange reason. Now that I think about it, how was her eye on the screwdriver like that? Wouldn't he have stabbed her through the pupil? Her eyes were definitely not positioned for the screwdriver to go straight up through the bottom of her eye. This game makes no sense. Literally none of this matters, but that's how my brain works. It's annoying. Like that itch you get on the bottom of your balls you can't scratch because you're wearing jeans. Ah, my old friend, the mining pit. You thought the centrifuge hall had a lot of enemies? That ain't nothing compared to this bitch. Despite stocking up on literally 235 rivet bolts before starting this area, I ran through a good 80% of what I had and picked up while clearing out every enemy. I mean, I didn't die or nothing, but I'm just saying, that's like a lot. The third wiggly boy and the catwalk room were too easy to even bother talking about, so I meet up with Strauss and have a tickle fight that... Oh, oh shit. Oh, fuck. Well, uh, hey man, I, I was just playing, man. Don't tell mom, okay? <laughs> On a lighter note, my experience in the elevator is what I consider to be the funniest part of my whole run. I went about it as usual, just stabbing bolt after bolt into each necromorph's legs until they just can't take it anymore. But on the very last one, I popped off its head and then ran out of ammo. The door at the top won't open though until every necromorph is dead. So I'm standing there, barbecue sauce on my titties, trying to think of a loophole or something to get me out of here. This dumb, no head, have an ass slasher doesn't even try to actually kill me. Kind of. I have no ammo, I can't use scam, and the slasher won't do anything to hurt itself. I tried reloading the checkpoint, but it just puts me exactly where I already was. At the top of the elevator, no ammo, door locked, with a headless ass hat that won't do me a favor and put itself out of its misery. Well, nothing to do except load an older save. Unfortunately, the freshest one I have is right after the mining pit. So reload, squash wiggles, strut down the catwalk, accidentally turn Strauss's brain to mush again, and back to the elevator. I made a new save just in case, but also stocked up on extra ammo. I also upgraded to the advanced suit during my shopping spree. And surprise, surprise, the elevator was no issue this time. Every single necro died like the ones that came before. Except this one really wanted the schmied. <laughs> I somehow get ragdolled by a hallucination, but I smooth talk it into letting me go. I still have to tell mom that Strauss is dead. Strauss is dead, Ellie. Do I look like I give a fuck? Because I don't. I'm a greedy little gremlin, which means collecting treasure by any means necessary. Ugh, I can't reach the semiconductor. Maybe if I shoot it. Pow. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Alright, well, I get the drill up and running and have to fend off a few meat sirens while Ellie gets it turned around. I hop aboard and prepare for it. Oh, there it is. Anyway, the drill was kind of a pain in the ass. Slashers that hopped aboard weren't much to worry about. It was the lurkers that gave me a hard time. The very narrow hitbox of a lurker tentacle is not so easily shot with a gun that fires little pellets of butt pudding. One lurker is bad enough, but four at the same time, plus the violently shaking drill making it hard to aim, makes this a miserable experience. That first batch of lurkers had me damn near dead. I actually wish they had killed me, as when a puker came aboard and finished me off, I ended up responding with red health. I should mention, by the way, that I was out of health packs at this point, but I chose to keep trying because I hate the idea of restarting an entire chapter, even as short as this one is. Attempt number three, the second group of lurkers killed me. Trying to kill them while also dealing with the slashers on the drill is very panic-inducing, but I kept trying. I zeroed in on every weak point, and with pinpoint focus and precision, I made only the shots necessary to survive. Facial recognition got a hit. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. I've been granted a brief reprieve from my punishment by being hurled through a wall into a government building. Alright, I've had enough of this. Hey Isaac, what are you doing? Bye Felicia. I stocked up on ammo and healed up for the next big fight in the processing room. Here's something annoying I never noticed until this playthrough. This is the only store until you get to the very end of the chapter, but at that point you've already fought everything. That means having to stock up enough to survive multiple onslaughts of overcooked meat bags. 
There's the processing room, the corridor where you let in a stampede of aforementioned meat bags, the orange marker room, the blue marker room, divider room, stalker room, laser room, and then the thermal conduit access, which ends with a brute. That's a lot of fucking rooms. And once you get to the laser room, you can't go back to the store. So do you see why this might be a problem? First up, processing. This room, as with most fights up to this point, wasn't difficult to survive. Like I said earlier, I'm rich as fuck now, so I can afford to just spray bullets until everything is dead. The Stampede Corridor was a giant pain in the tits. I nearly died because I was careless enough to get cornered and get my ass chomped on. I'd also wasted a lot of ammo trying to survive. Had I had a bit of foresight, it would have been better to just let them kill me and try again without playing like a complete noob. The two marker vat rooms? Not even an issue. I just ran through them. No need to kill what isn't necessary, right? It's definitely not because I was starting to run low on ammo. I got my last health upgrade when I made it to the divider room, and I basically just ran past it too. It gave me a little tickle on the taint when I was trying to escape, but nothing life-threatening. I got flat out brutalized in the stalker room. As I said, I was very low on ammo at this point, so I tried rushing ahead to get to the other side, completely forgetting I hadn't grabbed the fresh battery needed to open the door. I got myself cornered by a couple pukers who used today's lunch to disintegrate me into a pile of soggy engineer-flavored pudding. I'm sure you're wondering why I didn't just backtrack to a store at this point. As I write this, I am also wondering the same thing, but I can't change the past, so let's just continue on, shall we? I needed to be a lot less wasteful with my shots, so I really tried only shooting when I had a clear target on the stalkers and pukers. Although I wasn't 100% accurate, it was a vast improvement on the first attempt, and I'm ready to move on. The laser room isn't difficult. I got a little bit more ammo from the last room, so I had no issue mowing down each necro dork that stood, or I guess crawled, in my way. Thermal Conduit Access is the final gauntlet of the chapter. It's a tri-level section crammed full of a variety of crusty ass monkeys. I've gone far past using what ammo I've stocked up on at the beginning of the chapter. I'm pretty much using whatever spare parts I found lying around. I actually survived for quite a while in this first room, but the enemies just kept coming. I ran out of ammo four times and then basically got puked to death again. So I opted for strapping on my Adidas and hoofing it instead. That's basically what I tried to do at first anyway, but too many of those slow-eyed cock lumps got in my way. Regardless, I made it to the bottom floor, where I am greeted oh so graciously by a disgusting brute. Want to know what's really unfair about fighting brutes? The hitbox for their weak points on their shoulder blades is smaller than you think. If you shoot too close to an armored part of its body, your shots will just ricochet off of it. I quickly ran out of ammo and had to retry. This time, I lured it over the stasis canister, froze it, then completely fucking unloaded into its weak soy boy shoulder blades until it succumbed to its inevitable death. Convergence is at hand, brothers and sisters. A ghost convinces me to clamber up inside Mechagodzilla's anus and suck out some brain sludge. Good times. Now I've got to rush through a series of narrow corridors while being chased by a regenerating beast, while also trying not to get absolutely fucked by other necromorphs along the way. I'm gonna be honest, that didn't work out too well. Second attempt went a lot better. I managed to hold them off until I was granted respite in the zero gravity vacuum section. The obstacles are easily avoided without using stasis, so there's no issue there. There is, however, one more big wiggly at the end of this corridor just letting loose. The good thing is that I can just stay put right here and its little exploding projectile thingies won't hurt me. So I carefully put it down, float past the jet streams of instant death, and I'm in the clear for the time being. As you probably know, this is the final safe room before the end game. It's a long gauntlet of a couple dozen necromorphs and then the final boss. Luckily, I have no upgrades I need to make, so I stock up on three large health packs and as much ammo as my stubby little engineer arms can hold. Considering when I prepped for my detonator run, I ran through this final gauntlet about 893 times, so I was already pretty familiar with what enemy spawned where. Even though I went into this chapter with literally 682 rivet bolts, I wasn't sure how many I would need for the boss, so I did try to be deliberate with how I shot enemies along the way. The pukers were the most annoying part, TBH. They seem more durable than slashers, and that goddamn long-range projectile so accurate. I escaped the Ubermorph's cold hands of death and rushed my fat ass to the marker platform to meet my girlfriend's ghost again. Do you not hear how ridiculous that sentence sounds? I reunite with my beloved, only for her to reveal her unbelievable betrayal. Damn you! With 464 bolts ready to go, Isaac sacks up for a big fight by reciting his iconic line. Fuck you! I could sit here and tell you this fight was harder than expected. I could say it took hours and hours to finish, or that the rivet gun doesn't do enough damage. All of these statements, however, would be big fat lies. This fight was easy as hell! 
The hardest part was keeping those ethereal semen demons away from me and my phone. The markers did absolutely no chance. It takes around 15 shots give or take for Nicole to fuck off for a second while I shoot the marker. When it opens up its giant glowing ball sack, I just unload a full clip into it. Three cycles, and it was dead. The entire fight took a whopping 90 seconds. Ellie makes one last dramatic rescue just as the entire sprawl goes up in flames. We survived, and this challenge is complete. So, can you beat Dead Space 2 on survivalist difficulty without stasis, kinesis, or melee with only the rivet gun? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I'd say it was kinda easy. For me, it was slightly harder than a normal playthrough, but really only in the first half, and because this was my first time ever using the gun. The first three chapters were the hardest for sure, but by chapter 6 I was stockpiling enough money to not even have to think about being able to afford ammo. By chapter 8 the rivet gun was fully upgraded. I was able to be a bit careless at times because I had maxed out damage and plenty of money. I'd go as far as to say this challenge is beatable on zealot mode, except for maybe the tripod in chapter 1. Unfortunately the rivet bolts are just too weak that early on and you get very few of them. I scraped by with one shot left after dozens of attempts and nailing down my accuracy. Perhaps if you were able to backtrack better and collect a few more bolts than what I scrounged up, you could prove me wrong. But anyway, I'd like to introduce a new segment where I give the challenge as a whole a rating from 1 to 10. 1 being so easy I could fall asleep while playing, and 10 being equivalent to a Dark Souls damageless run with just my butt cheeks. I think I'd give this challenge a 5 out of 10. Early game was the hardest, but late game was much easier. The majority of the times I died was because I was careless or just didn't plan ahead. But oftentimes a second attempt went infinitely better. This rating system is completely arbitrary and is purely my opinion and is subject to reevaluation at any time, but that's how I'm rating each challenge I've done for now. So tell me, what did you think of this challenge? Should I try the game with a different gun? How about a suggestion for a Dead Space 1 or 3, or the Dead Space remake? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, click the like button and subscribe so you don't miss when I upload new challenges in the future. You can also click the bell icon so you get notified when I upload. But that will do it for now. Thank you so much for sticking to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.